Welcome back to TYT Sports, everybody. Uh, uh, Jason and about to be uh, Andre Snellings as well because there's a lot to discuss in the aftermath of the NBA Finals. LeBron James, the Golden State Warriors. What's next for both teams here? So in the Cavs <laughs> side of things, you know, LeBron is a free agent, technically. And of course, the, the headlines do read LeBron would be insane to leave the Cleveland Cavaliers at this point and why would he do that to his city? Well, he did make good on his promise to bring Cleveland a championship. What's left to do? So it does leave an interesting question in there. And in addition to that, uh, not maybe Kevin Durant to the Warriors has always been the, the, the question on everyone's mind. Of course, Kevin Durant can go anywhere he damn well feels like it, although it seems like the Oklahoma City Thunder would be the, uh, the right place given the money that would be on the line next season. But somebody else has come into that mix, a future Hall of Famer, an undoubted, uh, one of the best scorers of, of a generation of all time, Dirk Nowitzki, maybe finishes his career at Golden State. So, uh, Andre, first of all, been a while since we talked. Hope you've been well. And I know you enjoyed those finals. We were going back and forth on Twitter a little bit with the Warriors and the Cavs. So let's begin with LeBron. Would he be insane to leave? And if he did, what are some teams you'd like to throw out there for fun, just for discussion here, that you think would be a good fit? First of all, it's uh, hilarious to answer a question about LeBron when I'm, you know, I'm rocking my my Cavs uh, jersey, you know, got my Ohio pride going, my my, my Dayton hat. But um, anyway, um, I think that LeBron, there's no reason for him to leave at this point because for all the reasons you said, it wouldn't be good optics. It would, you know, you don't normally win a championship and then leave. And and so I think in the, it would be difficult for him to leave. Yes, he did keep his promise. And maybe I don't think there would be as much vitriol if he left again as it was when he made the, the decision. But um, it just wouldn't look good. I mean, as far as where, if, if he did leave, where he would go, it seems like the only reason he would leave Cleveland is if he decided he really wanted to just jumpstart his kind of mogul career um, moving to a huge market. And, you know, just NBA historically wise, he's got the opportunity now. You know, Kobe's on his way out of L.A. There's a vacuum of superstar talent there. Sure. Um, if he, you know, he's already become the person that has brought a title to Cleveland who hadn't won in 50-something years. If he's able to revive and then recarry um, the Lakers dynasty, bring them back to to the, you know, to the promised land, like so many other great NBA superstars have before him, then, you know, maybe that could be, that could at least be argued as, okay, I could see why he would do that. But even still, I just, it, it seems unlikely that at this point he would be on his way out the door. This might light the comment section on fire. However, I think it's more likely that LeBron leaves Cleveland than it is Kevin Durant signs a one-year or extended deal with Golden State. LeBron's had some problems with owners, and owners have had problems with LeBron. Dan Gilbert was the one person that, it, he, uh, that LeBron did not win this championship for. The city <laughs> of Cleveland, the fans, there was a lot of shade being thrown at Dan Gilbert and I think at Pat Riley, uh, at least, uh, like, uh, what's the word? It'll be like in the shadows in a way. He kind of did it silently in a certain type of way that, that obviously had its effect. So... I, but, I mean, for the most part, yeah, the, the best bet to make is LeBron resigns with the Cavs, another one-year deal worth every dollar that they can afford, and Kevin Durant resigns with the Thunder. But there's another person, of course, when it comes to the Cavs, because uh, Kevin Love, who you wrote an article about in Nylon Calculus, which I, I urge everyone to read, because uh, all the advanced numbers, all the numbers in itself, uh, state that the Cavs were a better team with Kevin Love on the floor. And even though he was not really found his exact position that he wants to be in or looks comfortable in, he was still a piece that made them a little bit better, right? He didn't do what Kyrie did. Is Kevin Love someone that's going to be out the door for the Cavaliers, or are the Cavs going to keep their big three intact with Kyrie, Love, and, and uh, LeBron? Yeah, that, that's an interesting question because, um, you, as you pointed out, as, you know, I wrote on Nylon Calculus that at the time I wrote that article, Love had just sat out game three in Cleveland at one by approximately 74 points and everyone said hey it was Kevin Love's fault he's the reason that the team's not doing well and, and so that article was pointing out that no the reason they were struggling in games one and two wasn't because of Kevin Love it was because up until that point they were just playing so much better at home than on the road and right. so um 
You know, Love obviously did not have the type of marquee finals that Kyrie Irving did. Um, but he did get to to make his highlight at the end, you know. He got the big defensive stop one on one on the right. island with Steph Curry yeah. that kind of closed the door on the championship. So, you know, that was nice, I'm, I'm sure, optically for him. As far as whether he stays in Cleveland or not, I could see him leaving much more so than LeBron. And it's not because he's a bad player or even necessarily that he didn't have the greatest finals performance. I think it's just because him, he plays the position that LeBron should play. Right. Like moving forward, LeBron should be a power forward. I mean, he's always been power forward size. He has the athletic ability to do whatever he wants. But in today's NBA, going small ball, you know, it just exactly. makes sense for him to play the four. And Kevin Love is not the type of power forward that would make much sense as a small ball five. You know, he doesn't have the speed and athletic ability of a Draymond Green. He's not an outstanding mm -hmm. defender, despite that one stop. Um, so, and his three-pointer is just not consistent. That was the one part of the finals that was a disappointment for me for Kevin Love was, you know, he got a lot of wide open looks and couldn't knock him down. So with that said, I could imagine the Cavs saying, you know what? You play the same position as our best player. Let's see what we can get for you that would be value for us uh, somewhere of, of a bigger need. The important, one of the most important parts you just said right there, you made a lot of great points, but uh, LeBron plays Kevin Love's position. So in that specific instance, that game five were approximately 74 points, and it was all because Kevin Love was on the bench, according to the Internet's reaction, uh, it was more because it doesn't matter who you replace LeBron with, he's going to play your position better than you. I mean, technically, he's out there. He proved once again why he's one of the world's greatest basketball players and why he potentially was the real MVP this year. He stepped up when it was needed. Right, Kyrie Irving hit the game winner in that game, but LeBron's triple-double meant nothing, right? Just like Ray <laughs> Allen's game winner. If you ask it, Bayless. Which is, well, exactly, which is why I always kind of bring it up is Ray Allen bailed out LeBron James, who LeBron James had a triple-double in that game as well, game six of the NBA Finals. So, again, you put LeBron at the one, he's probably going to be better than Kyrie Irving. You put LeBron at the two, he probably would be better than Klay Thompson, even though he's <laughs> going to be not shooting as well from three. Like, so you can replace LeBron with any player in the league, and there's only a handful that might outdo him, right? All right, so now, speaking of Klay Thompson and Steph Curry and Harrison Barnes, what's cooler than being cool, Andre Snellings? That would ice be cold. Ice cold. <laughs> I think that was my favorite uh, gift that was thrown out there, also because I'm a huge fan of Outcast. So Harrison Barnes is still going to get a max deal. You're a huge Outcast fan? I'm a huge Outcast fan, yeah. I did not know this. Yes. You've just like moved up my personal oh, favorites list. Of course. I just saw I just saw Big Boy recently uh, do a show at E3, which was great. They were throwing some That's old. Uh, no Andre 3000, which obviously is one of the best out there, but that funk, come on, the funk rap, man. It's too good. Outcast didn't claim it true. It's very true. Uh, but so uh, uh, Harrison Barnes still getting still getting a max contract, uh, and here's the reason why Harrison Barnes in today's NBA, uh, even though we both agree that there's really only 15ish guys that play to a max contract, how the NBA works is 50 guys get max contracts. So he's going to be on the move most likely unless he signs with the Warriors, which again is still a possibility. I think there's an immense amount of teams in the NBA he can use. Uh, Harrison Barnes. I think the Clippers are one of those teams. I think the Hawks are one of those teams. I think anybody who can play athletically on the wing and can score is a player, a role player that could be needed. And let's not discredit Harrison Barnes too much. Yes, he went cold in the finals. But Harrison Barnes was immensely helpful to that team during the 73-win regular season and up until that point in the finals. I think you agree here. I'm curious if you don't. But where do you think Harrison Barnes ends up, or what should the Warriors at least try to do with him? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that Harrison Barnes is, like as you described, he's a useful player, especially in today's NBA. I mean, he's a, a, a wing. He's got good size. Normally, he can knock down the three. Um, he can slide over and play the four in a small ball lineup and be effective. Um, so I think he's a useful player. I don't think, as you pointed out, that he's a max player. I think somebody might give him more money than he deserves. Mm -hmm. And the the issue with that, because it's not my money, so I don't care how much he makes, but the issue with that is then he starts getting expectations and you worry that he'll try to live up to them by trying to do more than maybe he's his game is comfortable doing. Um, as for where he could go, yes, just basketball-wise on the court, 
I think most teams, as you alluded to, he's a role player. He's not he's not a superstar. So I don't worry so much about fit with him. You know, you just find a, a team that needs a forward and and he would you know, he'd be a good fit there. Um, it's not like if if you're bringing LeBron to the team or, you know, what I'm saying that you have to build your whole team right, around him. Right. Harrison Barnes should fit for pretty much anyone It's just, you know, and then with this year's salary cap situation being so crazy. Maybe he can get his big contract and it not be a negative so much for the team he's going to. I don't know. But um, for 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 me, I would not pay him max money or anything near it for my team. Seeing Dirk Nowitzki in anything other than a Mavs uniform would be weird. We've only It's like seeing Kobe in a different uniform. We've only seen Dirk play for the Mavs. Now, Dirk might not be the best defender in the NBA, but the man could still score a basketball. And at one point, if you remember, about 30 games into the NBA season, I want to find the stats for you. I wish I had them in front of me. There was a big Reddit thread, a couple community threads, that Dirk was shooting some of the best of his career, at least percentage-wise. Uh, so he's still got some left in the tank, I think. I think when, if you're going to compare him to some of the older or veterans, you know, a guy who could possibly be a warrior in a team where the minutes management is pretty much under control, do you think that's a fit that they would need, or do they have too many scores that he's not the right big to put on that team? So it's interesting because we actually haven't even really discussed the possibility of Durant, Durant to the right. Warriors, um, which would you know be uh, obviously the much bigger story were it to happen. But maybe Dirk might be the realistic, story the more realistic yeah. option. You know, um, looking at at the the, the possibilities of whether Durant will move or not. Um, like you, I don't really imagine Dirk leaving Dallas at this point. Um, it's possible. I guess it's in play. Um, there's been some expressed interest in the public from someone, you know, right, that, that, right. that has us discussing this. But to me, if you're one of those lifers on a given team, unless you have never won a title, and then you're like, okay, I gotta take my chance, you know, course, go go for it. Maybe go to Golden State to try to get a ring. The David West or, system, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or if you're one of the, you know a player that um, the team that you're on just does not want you anymore. It's just like you know what, um, kind of like Paul Pierce was with Boston, where they were just they needed to move on, and they were like, okay, let. Let's, let's just part ways. Right. Those are really the only circumstances where I would see a player like Dirk moving on, and I don't think either of those are the case. I mean, obviously, he already has a ring, and you know, I think Mark Cuban would name him his son if he could. So I, I don't know. I don't really see him leaving Dallas. If he did leave Dallas, though, I do think he would be a good fit in Golden State because he would essentially make their death lineup even deathlier, if <laughs> right, that's true. a word. Um, it's like essentially he would replace, um, you know, we were just talking about Harrison Barnes. He would replace Harrison Barnes. Um, Draymond would stay at the four. Dirk would have to guard opposing fives. And, um, you know, you talk about somebody going cold. Dirk's not going cold. Ever. That's, that's right. So, true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like how would you possibly defend that? You got Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Dirk Nowitzki, Draymond Green, even if Andre Iguodala is the other one, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, it's. It's kind of unfair to everybody else in the NBA. It's just it's amazing. I love talking about Dirk Nowitzki. I think he's one of the most well-liked players. I don't really know many people, even the Heat fans, when he made that remarkable playoff run and everything leading up to that. I don't think they they hate Dirk Nowitzki. The guy has one of the he's one of the top ten scorers of all time and has been a great ambassador to the game for a long time as well. I don't. Well, I mean, Mark Cuban might cry if that was the case. But by the way, before we wrap up, so 538 ran the numbers. There's only one player, uh, team's playoff run that was considered more remarkable in terms of a comeback, uh, or at least NBA Finals comeback, and that was Dirk Nowitzki's 2011 Dallas Mavericks. A little bit of Jason Terry's Dallas Mavericks, too. Don't, can't count him out as well. But uh, that's the one that surpassed LeBron, at least according to the 538's pre-series ELO numbers for the advanced stat guys out there as well. All right, Andre, we need them to comment below. Now we go to the comment section. Like, favorite, subscribe to the video. It goes a long, long way. We appreciate you watching. Make sure to check out Andre at Professor DRZ over on Twitter, on rotowire.com. Check out the Hoops Lab articles as well. As for myself, at Jason Rubin 91 and TYT Sports at TYT Sports. We'll see you next time.